don't make these six beginner mistakes in your travel vlogs. Over the past two weeks, I've been working really hard to make a travel video of my trip to Porto, Portugal. However, no matter how much I struggled, I just couldn't make it work. There were too many missing ingredients, making it impossible for me to create a travel video that I could be proud of. As I called it quits yesterday, I realized all of these struggles I had throughout the editing process could be more valuable than the portal video I was trying to make. Today, I want to walk you through the six beginner mistakes to avoid to make better travel videos. These mistakes are not unique to content creators. They are beneficial to anyone who wants to turn their travel memories into fun videos they can look back on. So let's get to it. Plan your video, or at least have a general idea of the kind of video you're trying to make or the story you want to tell. I always plan my trips down to a T, but I rarely plan my travel videos ahead of time. It's usually my first time visiting these places, so I usually don't know what to expect or what kind of video I want to make. As a result, I'm always struggling in post, trying to come up with a story after the fact. It's hard to create value when you're busy trying to piece everything together. Travel videos are much more engaging when you're talking about your experiences on the spot instead of doing voiceovers over a bunch of b-rolls. When I'm editing, I'm always thinking about why would someone choose to watch my video over an expert's well-planned video. The only advantage I have is I can provide the viewer a glimpse of my unique perspective and adventures. Having some ideas of where you want your video or adventures to go before you hit record will make your storytelling much better. If you can set out to make a specific video, that's even better. Take the time to get to know your gear and be familiar with all the settings that you need quick access to. I'm still learning about this myself. When you're out there sightseeing and experiencing life, you'll want to be able to quickly change settings like the ISO, the aperture, shutter speed, or the frame rate when you want to do some B-rolls. In the past, I made the mistake of shooting at the wrong shutter speed. The footage ended up looking really weird and become unusable. I've also had issues where I thought I was recording the audio, but I actually was having mic issue or the mic was just not even on and those footage can't be used either. There's just no time for this when you're traveling and having the best time of your life. You want to be ready to shoot those epic B-rolls. Schedule time to rest. Save some time in your schedule to relax and explore leisurely. This tip might be unique to meticulous travelers like me who are overly ambitious when they plan their travel itinerary. I do this because I feel FOMO. You just never know when you're gonna be back again. We would tour and film for an entire day and when I get back to the hotel at night, I would start planning for the next day. The benefit to this is the amount of footage I get, but this leaves me tired and exhausted. Exhausted. Stephanie's tired because she researched. We usually don't even have time to recuperate from jet lag, which makes me not want to be in front of the camera. In the portal video I was trying to make, there was only one clip of me talking to the camera. I was feeling cranky, tired, and cold. This leads me to the next point. Vlog by filming yourself talking to the camera. Even if you don't plan on using these footage in your final video, I would still highly suggest you film yourself talking to the camera. I didn't do this as often as I should have, but you should definitely try to vlog in the beginning and end of your day, before and after activities that you want to remember. I can cry right now. <laughs> that happy? I avoid the line a little bit because it gets long. Fast. and after something memorable and crazy happened. These footage serve as important documentations of all the details you want to remember. They will also keep the viewers engaged. This requires getting into the habit, but it's worth it. There were so many crazy memories we wish we had captured in our month-long trip in Europe. If we had footage of us discussing them right afterwards, they would have been great memory capsules. On our last night in Barcelona, when we were enjoying our last dinner on on an outdoor balcony at a restaurant, there were so many people there. We witnessed a thief on a bicycle snatching a purse right in front of us. Seconds later, an undercover police tackled the thief and saved the day. It was definitely more memorable than the street performers that were pushing us to tip while we enjoy our dinner. 
get a variety of shots. This tip is especially helpful if you don't storyboard your videos, which I don't. Capture a range of shots to build your story. Wide shots are great for setting the scene, medium shots are great for capturing emotions and the atmosphere, get some close-ups to highlight the interesting details. This variety will make editing your story together so much easier. Another thing to consider is capturing transition shots. For example, show footage of you heading to a new location or finishing an activity. Eating scenes don't have to end when the food arrives. We do this all the time. We just couldn't wait to eat, so our filming always ends when the food arrives. You can also capture shots of you walking or taking the train. These footage will help editing your travel videos together so much easier. They help to create a more cohesive narrative. We're always missing these because we're always in a hurry. Looking back at my portal footage, I definitely didn't do a good job filming the city's architecture. The architecture is an important part of the city's character, but I often film the them in a low angle from wherever I was standing. Next time, I can make more of an effort to move around and find more interesting framing. There's no point in filming everything if most of them are unusable anyway. Capture ambient sounds. I think this one might just be my personal opinion. I usually set my microphone setting to a pretty low setting or sometimes I'm just not even using it at all. As a result, a lot of my footage doesn't even have audio in them. Sound is such an easy way to immerse the viewers into the world that you're trying to show. Sounds of restaurant chatters, waves hitting the rocks, the rain pouring, these can all be used to enhance the viewer's experience. By using the original audio as a starting point in your editing, you can create an even more immersive sound design. I regret not capturing more of the sounds of trains passing through or the conversations in the restaurants. When I was editing, I realized how much I enjoyed using the live performance audio that Andrew had captured in his footage. Hearing those sounds really brought me right back to the streets of Portal. I hope these mistakes I pointed out will be helpful for your own travel videos. I know I'll be working on them on my upcoming trips in Japan and Taiwan. Let me know in the comments below if you've shared similar experiences or have other tips to offer. I'll see you in the next video. Refilm this because I look si I sounded tired. Eh.